The scientific method was used by famous scientists like Isaac Newton, Charles Darwin, and Niels Bohr, but they all essentially used the same method, and it always begins with a question. Let's take a quick look at the steps that are used for the scientific method. First of all, you start with the question that you want to answer. For example, we could say that we have a plant and that plant is growing and we're going to play different types of music for it. And so maybe our question is, what type of music is going to make that plant grow best? Next, we formulate our hypothesis. We sometimes refer to a hypothesis as an educated guess. But in science, it's kind of a misnomer. It's not so much a guess as we know what is going to happen. We just have to prove it. That doesn't mean our hypothesis is always correct, but we start with a hypothesis, which is the idea of what we think might happen. Let's assume then that in the case of the plant, our hypothesis is that plants grow best when country music is played. Next, we identify the independent variable. In an experiment, the question will always tell you what the two variables are. So listen carefully how I say that. I want to determine how the type of music affects plant growth. Now I don't know if you heard that, but there are two variables inside there. One was the type of music and the other one is plant growth. If we look at the independent variable, the way that I talk about this in classes, the independent variable is the one that I change. The dependent variable then is a resulting variable. In other words, it results as an action of the independent variable. So if we go back to that question again, how does music affect plant growth? The independent variable is the type of music that we play and the dependent variable is going to be the plant growth. Next we have controlled variables and these are everything we want to keep the same. In this experiment, what are the things we would want to keep the same? They could be the amount of light, the amount of water, the type of nutrients used, the species of plants we choose, the volume of music, and the amount of time we play music for the plants. These are all examples of the controlled variables. If we don't control all the variables, then we can never know if we actually show that the independent variable is responsible for the results. Now let's identify what a control group refers to. In the case of our plant experiment, the control group is a group of plants with the same controlled variables, but these plants receive no music at all. Why would we do that? Well, we really want to make sure that it is the music that is affecting plant growth. So if we see differences between the control group and the experimental group, then we can say the change is accounted for by the music. Next is the collection of data, which is usually collected in a data table and then organized into a graph. Remember with graphs that the independent variable is always on the bottom and the dependent variable is always on the side. Once we have collected the data, we can analyze the results and come to a conclusion. A conclusion is made by looking back at the hypotheses and identifying if our hypothesis is correct or incorrect. Results of experiments are then published so other scientists can repeat the same experiment and that's how science builds on itself by retesting over and over again. This retesting provides checks and balances that eventually prove a hypothesis. In conclusion then, the scientific method is made up of the following steps. First, identify a problem with a question. Second, formulate a hypothesis based on observation and research. Third, run the experiment. Fourth, collect the data and analyze the results. Fifth, come to a conclusion 
based on experimental data. And finally, communicate your results.